We are almost there, aren't we? We're almost to Christmas. We're almost to the point where a vaccine's gonna be available to folks throughout the United States, which means we're almost to the point of being able to gather for worship again. But as we come to this fourth Sunday of Advent, this morning we read the story of Mary, the mother of our Lord, and the angel coming to her. We saw it presented for the children with special effects, but this is the story as recorded in Luke's Gospel, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How could this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If I had a crowd here this morning, I would ask people to answer a question for me. What are powerful images that you can think of? I'm guessing most of you would not say a baby. I probably hear about superheroes from some of the kids, maybe even the teenagers, because superheroes are all over the media right now. And I might hear things about horsepower, how we used to measure the power from cars because of the transition from things being drawn by horses. Even railroad um, engines were measured in horsepower back in the day. Or the power of armies, or the power of armaments and guns. Because some people who feel very powerless in the world feel like they have to walk into the world defended with some sort of weapon to protect themselves. Now, I don't know if you follow Facebook, but there's a meme going around where someone had put out a letter to their neighbors. They lived in an apartment building saying they were going to let their child cry himself to sleep at night because they didn't know what else to do. They'd gone without sleep so many times. They had a newborn in the house. And he was crying, and they were going to try to let him learn to soothe himself, but they warned their neighbors that they were not child abusers. They also bribed their neighbors with stopping by for perhaps a shot of tequila. And one of the neighbors posted the letter on Facebook along with the message, I'm baking them some cookies today. So maybe if you had a baby in the house, you feel like that baby has great power. It has the power to keep you up all night. It has the power to break your heart and make you sick with worry. It also has the power to make grown men make all kinds of little goo-goo sounds and baby faces at a baby. But generally, babies aren't considered to have much power. And we read a story today of a baby being born to a girl who had absolutely no power and no standing in the world in which she lived. Because children were very much expendable in those days. Infant mortality was high and many people didn't live into adulthood. And Mary had been promised to Joseph, a man she probably barely knew if she knew him at all, though they lived in a rather small village of Bethlehem, not too far from Jerusalem, sort of like the difference between Cockeysville and Towson, about that far away. In those days, a greater distance when you traveled it on foot. And Mary would have been living with her parents in her home. She would have been learning the duties of a wife and a mother, even though she was probably no more than 14 or 15 years old, in a time when women were the property of their father until they were married, and then they became the property of their husband. And imagine her shock, her surprise, and even her fright when an angel appeared to her. Not with wings, because angels don't have wings in scripture. They only have wings and stained glass windows and in paintings, so we know who they are. That's part of the iconog um, iconography of 
scripture. So you could see who is who when you're looking at stories and trying to learn them before a time when most people could read. And so an angel appeared to her. And perhaps he had a glow around him. I had asked the boys who did our video to make him glow. I didn't know quite that they were going to make him explode, but we all got a good laugh with that one. But here is an angel appearing to this child and saying to her, Hail Mary, greetings, you are favored by God. Imagine her shock at that message. You are favored by God, little girl born across the planet from where we are right now. Of all the girls in the world, God speaks to her through the angel and says, you will be God's son. Now, don't for a minute think this was just a blessing to her, which it was, more of a blessing to us. But you have to remember the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures, the law of God written down in the Torah, that a woman who was found to be unfaithful to her husband, and Joseph was not married to her at the time, but their agreement was a legal binding contract. So she couldn't just leave her, he would have to divorce her. And she was found to be with child, she would be stoned to death under the law of God. So what God is asking her to do is an incredible thing. And she asked the angel just one question, how can this be, I'm a virgin? And he said to her, the power of the spirit, again, the power of love, will come over you and you shall conceive and bear a son who will be called son of God. And the line that rings through the ages for us even here today, for with God, nothing will be impossible. And Mary, a little girl in a poor family in a small town, 2,000 years ago, says, may it happen to me as you have said, because I am my God's servant. It's an incredible story. It's an incredible story of faith and the power of love. And then Mary will go to her cousin Elizabeth, who is expecting John the Baptist, the one who will baptize Jesus, the one we've spoken of the last several weeks, the one who saw his cousin coming and said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world the one who calls people to repentance, the one that they thought might be the Messiah, because John was a little bit more flamboyant than his cousin Jesus. But no, he was the one who pointed the way. And when Mary goes to see her cousin Elizabeth, and I've always wondered if perhaps her parents sent her to Elizabeth to get her out of town because she was an unwed expectant mother. She goes and Elizabeth feels her baby leap inside her. And she understands that she is in the presence of the mother of the Messiah. This is what Mary says then. This comes from Luke's Gospel. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the loneliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Quite a song from this young girl who has been asked to do something incredible but what does it mean for us today? Because we are 2,000 years past the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And one of the things that I miss the most is the pageants with the children dressed up as shepherds and angels and donkeys and camels and Mary and Joseph holding a baby doll. I miss seeing the children acting out this story as they learn it and it comes into their hearts and it grows in them to an understanding of who they are in Jesus Christ because who Jesus Christ is for them. I miss that this year. And I even miss the story being read to us in the King James English, which is how it was read to me when I was a child. Even though I love that version, I won't use it today because too many children who are coming into the faith don't understand that language. But he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. 
in the King James, he has regarded the estate of his handmaiden. What does it mean to be regarded by God? It means that out of all the world, less populated then than today, he looked into the heart of Mary and saw there someone whose love for him was unquestionable, someone whose faith was strong enough to take on this task, someone who would risk her own life for the baby that she was going to carry, someone who would stand at the foot of his cross and never leave him at the worst moment of his earthly life. God saw that in her. God saw her. God regarded her. God regards us and sees us just the same way. And God gives us the power of love, not just the power of God's love which surrounds us and upholds us and gives us courage, not just the power of God's love that reminds us always that nothing is impossible for God, but God gives us the power to love others. And it is power that we've been given, power from on high through the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit who came upon Mary so that she might conceive and bear this child is the spirit that comes to us with gifts, with a call, with a ministry. I will always continue to tell the story of my own call that I received when I was very young, 10 years old. My teacher said, what are you going to be when you grow up? And I said, the first woman bishop of the Methodist church, because then it was the Methodist church. Well, it wasn't until years later that I felt called to be a pastor. I felt called to be a bishop because I had been to an ordination service and I saw that divine game of duck, duck, goose where the bishop went to men kneeling and touched each of them and turned them into pastors and I thought, that's what I want to do. I want to touch people and make them pastors. Didn't know then, but that call would evolve into a call to become a pastor myself, a shepherd for God's people who works for the good shepherd, the great shepherd of Israel and of the whole world. But I was told that girls couldn't do that. And so for years, I tried to talk myself out of my call. But then one of the people who became a sponsor at my own ordination said to me, is God calling you or someone else's idea of who you should be? And I said, here I am, Lord, may it happen to me as you have said. God regarded me, a kid from Cockeysville, Maryland, where nothing big was happening back in those days, I went to Cockeysville Junior High, now Cockeysville Middle School, when it was almost a brand new building, and next to it was a farm with a barn and a silo. That's how old I am. But God regarded me and called me and found me worthy, even though I didn't see myself as worthy. And God calls each of us and gifts each of us for ministry with the power of love, the power of love that God pours into us through Christ, but the power to love, which for us can be an act of will. My Old Testament professor at Wesley Theological Seminary died years ago, Dr. Dewey Beagle. But I remember him always saying to us, agape, the love of God that we are called to emulate is an act of will. Think back to the baby. When you were handed your own child for the first time, or better yet, when you saw your own grandchild for the first time, People tell me the flood of love that pours out of them for this unknown little stranger that they just were handed for the first time is incredible and overwhelming. When you saw your sweetheart for the first time and your little heart went pity pat in your chest, that's a different kind of love too. That's love that has control over you. Agape, on the other hand, is love that we control. It's an act of will. It's saying, I will look upon the world with the love of God. Regardless of someone's sin or shame or background, I will look upon the world with the same love that God looked into my heart and saw me. I will regard others with that love and count them worthy because they too have been created in the image of God. Imagine what the world would look like if we together would say as the people of God in Jesus Christ, with God, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. We would change the world. If we looked upon the world with the love that God looks upon us, if we would regard the lowly, if we would raise up the fallen, if we would share with them the wealth that we have been given, not just material goods, but if they're needed, our material goods, but the good news of God in Jesus Christ that has saved us and made us whole. What if we were to share that with the world as an act of love? What if we exercise the power of love in the world? 
It would look very different. Reminds me of back when I was struggling with a call to ministry of the writings of a Jesuit priest. I didn't know what a Jesuit priest was in those days, but I remember reading this and it touched my heart and it has stayed with me ever since. His name was Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. He was a French Jesuit. What he said was, someday, after mastering the winds, the waves, the tides, and gravity, we shall harness for God the energies of love. And then, for a second time in the history of the world, man will have discovered fire. What power we hold in our hands if we just shared it with the world, the power of love. Perhaps you feel powerless. If you feel powerless, if you feel unseen, if you feel hidden and disregarded, remember that the God who created the universe and all that fills it, the God who became flesh in Jesus Christ and took upon himself our sin, our guilt, and our shame, knows you each by name, knows your heart, has gifted you, and has loved you. With that God, nothing is impossible. What powerful, powerful people we are through that love. To the glory of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, amen.